So The Haunting of Hill House, episode four, the twin thing, is the Luke episode. One I've been dying to see because we've seen the least of him out of the siblings. And this episode deals with clearly addiction, but it also deals with being an adult child and codependency issues and fear in general. So it hits a lot. So let's jump into it. So it opens in the past with little Luke talking to this ghost Abigail about no one believing him about this ghost in the basement. And he's saying this to a ghost in Abigail. And he's like, you believe me, Abigail. And it already cuts the opening theme. So this was the shortest intro by far. So this episode did shy away a bit from the Abigail ghost, making me think she's super important down the road. Then they don't want to show too much of her. But the point of that scene is to start ramming home the fact of Luke's dilemma where no one believes him about any of this stuff. So then we see Luke at the recovery center 90 days ago from Nell's death when he first checked into rehab again. And in the support group meeting he's in, a blind man's talking about experience he had in battle. The importance of this speech he had and story was him seeing this dead girl's face everywhere. Really disturbing to him talking about the eyes looking like eggs melting on a pan. And this actually to me leads back to Steven's theories about no one's seeing any of this supernatural stuff. It's all just trauma based. And this guy still sees this girl haunt him when he's blind. And he's like, I leaned on my habit to get rid of that face, but my habit made sure I never would. Some solid writing there about addiction and using it as a crutch that never helps you in the end. It's just a band-aid and how it hints at where this story's going with Luke and his ghost. So we see here though, Luke is again a newbie here, but he's eyeing a girl across the room Joey. And I already love the acting here of Oliver Jackson Cohen who plays Luke with just how he's acting on his first day back of rehab. Just the edginess, the look in his face. He's really, really good at this. So then we cut to two days before Nell dies and Luke gets his 90 day chip, which is huge in recovery. 90 days in any type of recovery is a sign that you've really, really progressed and things are changing in your brain. So he's about to make his speech and then we cut to the past and Luke's putting his army men around the drawing of the basement monster as a kid, which looking back now in hindsight's episode is really awesome because we learn later on in the episode that that seven represents his family and that's his army and his protection and he's their go-to comfort source. So I thought this was awesome. And I love how the show just shows you things you don't really know what it means and they'll eventually answer it in the same episode, which is nice. And you gotta understand here too, little Luke was warning his dad about the house being bad, but his dad was just not listening. And you see the moms bring all this stuff out for a yard sale they wanna do from this house. And what's important here is the hat that Luke sees and the dad says it's a big boy's hat. And he says, big boys know the difference between what is real and what is imaginary. This says it all for Luke. He has trouble facing his fears his whole life and trouble growing up into a big boy, into an adult. And this hat we're gonna see on his ghost later on. So it has so much meaning to it. This is his fear of being responsible and of being an adult and facing your fears head on, which also leads to themes in recovery. The key is to face your fears. And the dad says to Luke, you like the hat? And Nell says he loves it. And he's like, how do you know that? And she says, it's a twin thing. So this is referring to the title of the episode and it confirms Nell and Luke have a super twin connection here and feel everything from each other, basically. Very deep rooted. And the weirdest scene to me in this whole episode was we have this interesting line where the mom's talking to the dad about what she sees the house becoming and how she feels like she's having deja vu even saying all this. And it's super specific stuff and it kind of freaks the dad out. And she also mentions it's an accident waiting to happen with the ropes hanging above the stairs saying bodies will be swinging from them. Is she psychic? Is this really deja vu happening? This was kind of a curveball and makes me ex even more excited for her episode and what she's really visioning. So back to Luke and rehab, we see he hates the fourth step in the 12 step program. It always gets him. And that step is the fearless moral inventory. And as we see in a line later in this episode, he's the exact opposite of that fearless. So this is always going to be his biggest challenge. And then we get a little list of all the messed up stuff he's done that he's facing now. All the money he's used from Shirley, all the stuff he's stolen from Steven. He's lied to Theo numerous times and he broke Nell's heart by not being at that wedding. But he says here, I even robbed my a-hole of a father, but that doesn't keep me up at night. Very interesting. So Luke has no remorse towards his dad and doesn't like this man. And you see that already brewing when he's a kid. They don't really click. And, and I think that Nell and Luke are going to have their problems with the father at first, at least, because he 
kind of just shuts them down on everything. But Luke notices something's bothering Joey and he says she's nine months clean, but she doesn't tell him what is wrong. And this opens an interesting plot line, a very realistic one, which also relates to Nell and Luke's relationship, which is a problem in recovery sometimes is be you don't want to be too close to anybody. You have to break your codependency habit first and look within where a lot of times with addicts, they're looking for their answers outside of themselves when they have to really be looking at the inside. So this is hitting that codependency theme I'm talking about, which we'll get more into. And we also see, this is now the timeline where we see Steven called in to check on Luke. And Luke is like, Steven won't believe me when I say I'm doing well, he never does. And Paige, the rehab worker says, the sister who dropped you off seemed like she believed in you. And he's like, she always does, it's a twin thing. So again, confirming even as adults, Luke and Nell have that deep bond and they're more the outcasts of the family. So then overnight, on the same night, it brilliantly shows Luke waking up at 03, the moment Nell dies. This is when his withdrawal from Nell begins. And that's a reveal you get later in the episode. What is he really withdrawing from? Why is he getting the shakes? Why is he getting cold sweats and freezing? He's not withdrawing from drugs like you think. It's Nell. It's such an awesome concept they did this. And Nell's ghost appears and says, go. Luke is gonna say later on, he thinks that meant to go save Joey. But I think it was for other reasons and probably being Nell wants to him to find the real truth of what happened to her. So we go back to the past of them as kids and Nell sends up three of those buttons of that old phone thing and one gets stuck and then it eventually pops out and they hear this ghost through the old phone. And Nell's like, you're scared. I can tell you're scared because I'm scared. So it also shows not only do they feel each other's feeling, they're influencing each other too. They have a strong hold on each other. So this shows how this is also a gift and also a crutch like we had in the situation with Theo. Then back to Luke at the rehab center, he wakes up to a note from Joey under his pillow and it says not to follow her. And at this meeting he has where the other addicts talk about Joey leaving, Paige says that in the first year you should not have any personal relationships of any kind and looks at Luke and goes, Seth, you must talk about hanging on to someone for the recovery and you lean too hard on another addict who's not a reliable source. So Luke doesn't like what Paige is saying here. He's frantic, but really for two reasons. One, because he wants to find Joey and help her. And two, he doesn't even know the reason. He's withdrawing and he's kind of like confused, but it's because of Nell. Doesn't even realize. So then Luke calls Nell because he had that waking up moment last night. Wants to know she's okay. So I really do love their care for each other. They're not as cold as the Steven type. And the writing's on the wall here. For him to have such strong withdrawal symptoms from losing Nell, this had to be an insanely deep connection, but to an unhealthy level, like you would with drugs. So Luke knows to wait at this spot to see if Joey shows up for drugs. And we first see our glimpse of the man with the hat. I love how creepy this shot of him just standing there from the back comes. Then the barking dog it cuts to got me. And then it cuts to the barking dog in the past that they would hear outside, only the kids. And we see little Luke wakes up and he sees this slender man figure in full form in the hallway. I love his floating effect of not touching the floor. It's Definitely the creepiest goon in this show so far. Not even close. Props to the child actor, Julian Hilliard. Here is Luke when he's shaking under the bed. He nailed this. And this whole scene was directed so well. The pure terror of it with the feet coming from the bed angle. And then the shot of him in the, in the shadow reflection putting that hat on. And the best part was he was about to leave the room and then it freaks out he turns around. This is when I turned my light back on in my room watching this. Cause I knew something was coming and then you see a creepy hand and face pop out. This man literally represents Luke's fear of adulthood and being a responsible man. He's literally facing his fears as a kid right here. And this really just, again, makes you really wonder if any of these ghosts are real or is this just fear-based? So we cut back to when Luke's an adult and he finds Joey copping some drugs. He calls Paige and says he found her, but she's not having it. You run, you give up your spot. This highlights the struggle of addiction oh too well. He has good intentions here, we're finding out, but people will end up not trusting you anymore. They get sick of the same old song. And you see Luke tells Joey, I will fix this. I'll get us money to stay somewhere for a night or two. I'm gonna get you clean again, with you all the way like you were for me. Again, this is exactly the codependency issue you'll see in many drug addicts, where there's some things you can't control and it actually is not helping either of you by doing this. You gotta let someone sometimes fight their battles on their own and learn themselves. And what's really effective is Luke withdraws at the same time from Nell, the more he sees the Slender Man appearing. And then when Luke's talking to Joey about Nell, he says, we kind of are in each other's heads. It's a twin thing. I don't think we need this line again. It's three times now in the episode already. I thought it was a little overdone. It almost felt like they filmed it and didn't know they were gonna say it in an earlier scene. So maybe they could have edited that out, but 
I'm just nitpicking there, but that kind of frustrated me a bit. I don't need to be spoon fed it. But he tells a story how he broke his foot and now went nuts with her ankle and she iced it for an hour. And he says to Joey, you remind me of her. She always believed in me. The rest of fam, not so much. So that shows the good side of this though, that that's also in recovery and with addicts, they understand each other better than anyone else, which is a positive. And that's why you want to be in meetings and working through in ways with other addicts. And it's the same positive way that, yeah, Nell and Luke being connected helps each other out because it's someone else who sees their crazy world of seeing these ghosts like they do and believing in them. So again, the show is not black and white. It brings up great debate with all these type of things like addiction, like codependency. It's just showing you different ways to look at it. In a situation, you take what you believe of it. It's not preachy, which I like. Then we see Luke goes to Steven's house and he, his wife, Lee, opens the door. And there's a little great writing here that's so realistic, like Lee saying, what do you... And she's like, well, how are you? It's the classic reaction to someone who's a drug addict. They're not gonna trust you. They've heard the story before, so they want to jump to say, like, what do you want now? But they just have to be polite and say, how are you? And he's asking for Steve, but she's like, Steve doesn't live here anymore. We separated a month ago. And we still don't know why that happened, so... There is a hint to it we're gonna see the next scene which we'll get to but luke asks lee for money but she won't give it to him but she gives him steve's new address and then luke has a vision of a past dinner he had there and it was two months ago when he was 30 days clean and joey at the and joey at the table brags about luke's writings and his short story of abigail and she's like luke you should publish it make it big like steven and she's like you guys have it all nothing left to do but maybe fill this place up with kids hint at the drama there with steven's reaction and the wife's reaction that maybe their separation came from a disagreement of how to handle having kids or not. And Steven comes in kind of hard here, learning that this isn't Joey's first rodeo of being in rehab, and then he kind of gets really rude and asking what's different this time. And she says recovery is the same thing over and over again. Doesn't mean you stop because it gets repetitive one day at a time. Referring to Steven's comment where he said the definition of insanity is repeating the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And she basically negates this theory. So again, brings up great debate. And you can tell just from Joey saying that Luke loves this girl. And then Steven and Luke talk in the kitchen and Steven throws in the jab she might be slick. And Luke's like, she stayed up with me during withdrawal. Ever see someone in withdrawal, Steven? And Luke's like, I just want to bring a friend to dinner, not ask for your permission to marry this girl. But Steve is just done giving out second chances. Says he wasted them all on Luke, so he really doesn't trust anybody. And he really disses him because Luke says she's a good person. And then Steven says, just because someone is a good person, cares about you, doesn't mean they won't burn you. You know? Hinting at, obviously, to Luke's face saying, that's the case with him. So it was a huge burn and diss by Steven and Luke's pissed. And there's foreshadowing here. I mean, Steven calls it with Joey being slick and that she'll hurt him in the end. So he's Kind of right, too. He probably just didn't go about it the right way. So then it awesomely cuts to Luke saying it's freezing. And we just got explained to him what the withdrawal symptoms are for him. And he's in Steven's new apartment. And now we're lined up where he's stealing the iPad and the camera. And I love how this wraps around. They keep doing this in each episode. And it's awesome how we're seeing him come down the stairs from Luke's perspective now on the same scene from Steven's episode. And I love stories like this. We're getting full perspectives from different characters on the same exact situation, really cool stuff. You can't explain humanity and conflicts more, getting both sides of the coin. And this shows it doesn't make Luke look as bad as he did in episode one. I mean, he still has good intentions with what he's doing with that money. He's trying to help somebody. And Luke shows Joey outside the money he got and you could see her eyes light up right away for other reasons. So nice acting on her part. That was a big hint right there. And then Joey, when they're passing an alleyway, tells him, Tells Luke she's gotta take a pee, but then calls him baby for the first time we've heard, thanks him for helping her and kisses him and swipes his money from his back pocket while kissing him. This is ultimate mind screwing and messed up. That is heartbreaking. This girl he clearly had feelings for finally having a big moment like that and she's using that to get those drugs. But again, it's so realistic. Addicts will do anything to get that next fill when they're in that spiral but i think luke obviously because he is an act himself understands this as heartbroken he is this is part of the game so then we cut to luke's 90 day speech and it's a doozy and i love the lines where he's saying which i've already referenced how step four always gets him that he's not the fearless type and he talks about when his mom committed suicide how much it messed him up and he didn't understand death yet he was too young and he was just waiting for his mom to come back and that those taillights were the worst thinking it was mom pulling up and it never was and this also shows the effect of him and Nell 
probably being the most de- messed up too because they were the youngest when this tragedy of their mother happened. And he's like, my mom never came back, but other things from when I was a kid did. And that's the man with the hat. And I love it cuts to him, an example of him trying to beat his little ghosts and demons. And he's walking and counting away from the Slender Man. And I love he mentions in this speech too, he'll never know the pain that he caused other people. This was a tearjerker for me. And Oliver Jackson Cohen probably has a scene of the season for me so far. What a phenomenal acting monologue here and really touching scene, great writing. And then we see Luke calls Paige in the current time and he's basically at rock bottom here with this withdrawal and he's counting to seven. Paige says, we'll come get you. And she's with Steven, so I was happy to see Steven showed up there. And then we had a really great scene in the past where we see Luke sees Nell is awake. And Nell's like, you're awake? And Luke's like, I am, cause you're awake. And they bond over mom and dad not believing them ever. They really center on this hardship in that same boat together. Just like two drug addicts know each other well and can bond over the struggle of drug addiction that other people can't understand. So this episode's themes tie together so well. Think about how much you have to think through this writing a story like this. So again, props to Shirley Jackson, the writer of this book, The Haunting of Hill House. I haven't shown her love yet. I've literally just forgotten to, but great story writing. And I loved here the reveal, which I talked about earlier, of the seven army men, the seven buttons, the kind of seven is his family. And this shows how important family is and the strength they give you even when they're not with you. And the brilliance is them cutting back to present time when he's waiting for Steven and Paige. He's walking kind of seven to calm down and the ghost keeps coming closer and closer to him. And he's on edge of breaking completely here, going to drugs, but he he's not gonna do that this time. He's not gonna just take that as the crutch and not face his fear. I love how the ghost comes literally right up to him. And then he looks at it, sees his mother, facing his fear of what happened to his mom and dealing with it. And the beautiful tie around here was the headlights come in, but this time the headlights are good. They're not a sign of bad where Growing up, it meant his mom wasn't alive and that she didn't show up. But this time they're a sign of good. Steven did show up. A family member did come through for him. Awesome stuff. And Luke hugs Steven and you see Luke feels terrible about not being able to help Joey. And it really shows signs of things to come of how he'll handle Nell, which scares me. He takes these things hard, especially this is exactly a trait of codependent people. Then you see Steven tells Luke Nell is dead and Luke's like, how? And he says suicide and Luke's like, it wasn't. Oh baby, so that's some juice right there. Luke knows something we all don't and will lead now us into finding out what really happened to Nell. Ramp up the engine. So for this episode, the beginning dragged on a bit for me, but what an amazing second half. Standout performance by Oliver Jackson Cohen here. And this episode was a great realistic character study on the mind and the relationships of a drug addict. Also nice touch on fear, which is the name of the game in horror and in drug addiction. They mix both of them so well. Also, Facing the Fear of Becoming an Adult was thrown in there as well. It's another great episode for me. I'm gonna give this one a 9.4. Let me know what you thought of it down below. I love to hear your thoughts. And again, no spoilers for any episodes after this episode. Just talk about the episodes before and this one in particular. Let me know what you liked about it. Did you connect to any characters here? Did you learn anything? Did you enjoy it? What were your pros, cons? I love to hear all of it. I read every comment and I try to respond as many as I can. Please subscribe so you don't miss one of my reviews of Haunting of Hill House. I'm gonna be covering the whole season. And please follow me at SteveArley1 on Twitter and Instagram for more of me. And I'll see you next time.